Today on Traco Studios, we check out the Digitech Grunge Pedal. So I'm going to quickly get into the, uh, the pedal here and then we'll get into the sound samples. So explaining some of the knobs, we have loud, low, high, and grunge. Loud is our volume. Low and high are our low high frequency knobs. If you have an older DOD version, which is the original of this, this is the reissue being the Digitech, you might see butt and face, that's just your low and your high knobs. Note with the high knob, if you get past that 12 o'clock position with the high knob, you're going to get into some pretty extreme high shrilly sounds. So be very generous with the high knob when you're going to use it. The grunge knob is just adding gain over top of the already fixed distortion that's in this pedal so even when you have that all the way off you're still getting a distortion sound but when you start to turn that grunge knob up you're just putting more gain on top of the already distorted sound now for this review i'm using two different guitars i'm using my paul reed smith my rg ibanez guitar straight into the pedal into the JSX head clean channel, which you can see the settings for it there, into my aux amp top box, and you can see as I provided what settings I'm using for the aux amp top box, and that's going straight into my Apollo. The easiest way we could review this for you is the loud knob is gonna be fixed at 12 o'clock position. For each setting that I'm gonna use, the first setting, I'm gonna have the grunge knob all the way down then to the 12 o'clock position, and then as max possible as I could to get a decent sound. Uh, and my low and high knobs are just mixed to flavor for whatever I wanted for that setting. So here we go. This concludes my review of the Digitech Grunge Pedal. 
Now, first and foremost, here at Trico Studios, we don't put a lot of processing tools, EQing, compression, reverb, um, limiting, all that other kind of stuff that you can do to fine tune sound when you're recording and then put it on YouTube. We want you guys to have the rawest, purest tone so that when you guys watch a review from us and go, I'm interested in that, go and buy it. You plug your guitar into it, into your amplifier, and it sounds the same depending on what rig you're using or whatnot. So with that being said, is this the worst pedal that was ever made? Is it absolutely unusable? There's nothing in here tonally that sounds good. Is it not worth the $20 that I spent at a pawn shop to pay for it? That's absolutely false. Uh, I think in all honesty, I was able to get three decent sounds out of this pedal just from moving the grunge knob from all the way off to most of the way up and then in the middle. Uh, it's just a different flavor of distortion sound. Uh, two pedals that also come to mind that are a different flavor that are misunderstood or just don't sit well with people are two different boss pedals that I don't mind. I love both of them and that's the uh, Boss X-T2 Extortion pedal. People really didn't like that, and as well as the MZ2 uh, Digital Metalizer. That one really took people off guard. It was right at the end of the, the whole 80s phase of uh, chorus and everything else in your sound. But if you're looking for something that's different than distortion, that's different than everything else that's out there, it's definitely worth trying it out. Now, listening to some of the reviews that I've read online, some of the reviews that I've watched, I can already see what the main problem is with those reviews and why they're making this sound so horrible. And this goes with any pedal, not just this one. If you cannot establish a clean tone from just the guitar to the amplifier that sounds good, then anything that you put in the middle of it is just adding to that mess. Fix your clean tone, spend time with your amplifier, make sure that it's a nice, beautiful clean tone so that when you're adding something to it, you're not adding to the problem, you're adding, you're putting something that's worth adding to that sound. Uh, there was a lot of crunchy mess that I heard online and a lot of just, just awful clean tones and then you put this thing on it and it's like, well, of course, you just amplified a problem. Um, Start from the basics of tone, and then put things like this in front of it. Now sometimes you're not able to get exactly what you want out of your amplifier and stuff, so that's where an EQ pedal really works out, or if your amp's too fuzzy or too noisy, a noise suppressor is really gonna help you with those problems. But for the most part, make sure that you have the basics of tone down and you just understand your amplifier because if you can't understand that you're going to have a hard time trying to use a pedal that's so different compared to all the other pedals that are out there uh enough rambling from me i hope this review has been helping you decide if this is the right pedal for you or if it's not the right pedal for you that's totally okay I totally suggest going out and just playing around with it you might have fun with it for me, I don't think it's something that would go on my pedal board, but it's a really cool, I had fun with uh, reviewing this pedal. So until next time, I'm Kevin of Tricro Studios. Take care.